Hello, my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with a question I want to ask all of you. Do you still enjoy budget deck techs out there? Are you a fan of Death Touch? Or maybe you like alternate win cons? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, stick around for just a moment while I show you some cool gameplay footage from a deck I just threw together right now. Okay, everybody, here we go. We are looking to play our deck. We got Master Rebuke, Finn the Fangbearer, Admire Triton, Fangbearer, Admire Remove, Rivers Overload. Okay, let's keep this. We have what we need. Okay, so here's the game plan. We're gonna put out first off our Vampire of the Dire Moon. Our opponent, Manatize? Wow! The secret tech there, I wasn't expecting that. In any case, <laughs> sorry, I'm stunned from that. I didn't think they would actually Manatize us there on turn one, but okay, whatever. In any case, it's alright. We'll play our second Vampire of the Dire Moon. Do they have the mech in the tie? Nope. Okay. Rivers Overlook. We will sack it immediately upon entering the battlefield, and we will get a forest. Okay, uh, opponent. They're swinging Ancestral Anger. This is the Blitz deck, more or less, that we played. Probably their version might be a little bit better than ours, since they have better land base. But that's okay. Despite the fact that they're going to swing here, we are not going to block. We have enough life where we can just take a couple hits before we have to force them to deal with us. We're going to pass. All right, opponent's turn. Snow-covered mountain. Reckless rage. Annoying, but actually we can deal with that. All right, here's how. Tamiyo safekeeping. All right, we protect ourselves. They really can't go swinging right now because that means we... Oh, they are going to go swinging. Okay, sure. All right, I'm guessing they have some kind of protection. And there it is, God's willing. All right. We basically have a stalemate right here. All right. Only a little bit of damage goes through. Ooh. All right. We got a second fin. That's good. Let's get our down our second river's overlook. Go digging for another land. Get another forest. Fin it to win it, everybody. That's what we're here for. Fin comes down. We're going to go swinging. There we go. All right. And we got two poison counters on our opponent. Another eight more, and we get an instant win, regardless of what the board state is. Dreadhorde Arcanus. Annoying, but not bad. Okay. Blood Chief's Thirst. We gotta get rid of that Dreadhorde Arcanus. Avoid the value it provides. Opponent, you got one more card in hand. What do you got? They have another God's Willing. That's okay, because we've also got Master's Rebuke. Instant speed removal, everyone. <laughs> nice. That's out of the way. We're going to go swinging. I don't know if they're going to block here, though. They might. Okay. Okay. That's what they want to do. All right. So, before it dies, we still got a trigger off. So, they're at four poison counters. We need six more to go. And we have another Finn and a Mire Triton waiting in the wings. Play with fire. All right. That deals with our creature, but that's okay. We have enough life where we can sponge hits for a while. Ooh, yes. Call the Death Dweller. Bring back our original Finn and our Vampire. Sure, why not? We'll put a Death Touch counter on it again. Is there anything you got? And they have had enough. Woo! So there you have it, everybody. What you saw from our little demonstration there shows us that we are playing Touch of Death. Yes, I know someone out there is going to try to be all snarky and say, I just reworded Death Touch Tribal and just made it sound cooler. Well, you know what? You're right. And I'll be honest, I don't care if you think that way because Touch of Death does sound cooler. It really does. But in any case, let's talk about how this deck is working. If you didn't already see, the basic idea of the plan is we are using all creatures with death touch on them to either block our opponent from doing any of their damage at our face, and then we will slowly get out some of our other support cards to then close out the game. Specifically, plan A's of the deck is to get Finn the Fangbearer out. If you don't know how poison counters work, this is the only one that's actually available in our current arena client but as you see right here it says whenever a creature you control with death touch deals combat damage to a player that player gets two poison counters and if a player gets 10 or more poison counters they lose the game so the good news with our deck is despite the fact that most of our creatures are very weak 
in terms of damage as long as we can get at least a couple death touch hits on our opponent once we get enough counters on them they lose regardless of whatever the board state is and that's what we're hoping to do if you can't get there with Finn the fang bearer our backup plan is to use hooded blight fang hooded blight fang here is a one four snake for two of any and one black with whenever a creature you control with death touch attacks our opponents lose one life and we gain one life and as a small bonus, it says whenever a creature you control with Death Touch deals damage to a Planeswalker, we get to destroy the Planeswalker. Not that that's relevant to our game plan, we're just hoping to then life, gain, and drain as a plan B to the deck. But as you can see, the creatures that we need to get there with it will be Vampire of the Dire Moon, very cheap. Foulmire Knights, a 2-in-1 where we can draw a card and also have a Death Touch creature out. We will also have in the 2-drop Meyer Triton. It mills for 2 and then helps us gain some life. And then Shevel Bane of Monsters, which is actually a really sweet card that I highly underestimate all the time I, whenever I used to fight against it. But as it says right here on the card, at the beginning of your upkeep, if your opponents control no permanents with bounty counters on them, you place a bounty counter on target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. And whenever a permanent an opponent controls with a bounty counter on it dies, we gain three life and draw a card. So even though our deck doesn't really have that much card draw per se, cards like Shevel and cards like Foulmire Knight can just help us get to what we need to in a pinch. As far as the support to make sure that the game plan goes off, as I just mentioned earlier, most of our cards don't really have that much raw damage. But again, we're relying on Death Touch to close out the game in a hurry. But to do that, sometimes we do have some creatures that we just can't push through. So we have cards like Blizzard Brawl. We have Master's Rebuke as ways of just initializing and forcing our damage through to creatures, getting them out of the way so we can clear the board and then get those poison counters onto our opponent, making him lose. As far as ways of protecting how the game plan works, we have Tamiyo Savekeeping. This is a sweet card that allows us to protect our creature by giving it Hexproof and Indestructible and getting a little extra life to stabilize. If our board just keeps getting blown up by other stuff, however, we also have cards such as Blood Chief's Thirst to destroy our opponent's creatures if we have no extra support there to bring back our creatures we have call of the death dweller just three copies of but as you can see it brings creatures back with a total mana value of three or less so as you see with the magic number here hooded blight fangs are highest mana value creature everything else is two or less so this should usually give us two for one and again it'll put a death touch counter and a menace counter on them obviously double death touch doesn't do anything but putting a menace counter sometimes on even something as simple as a vampire of the dire moon can cause some frustration for our opponent because that means it's evasive and that with Finn the fang bearer out would guarantee that we can get through some extra poison counters to our opponent Mana base, we are on a budget, so nothing really special here. Just eight snow-covered swamps, four snow-covered forests, some woodland chasms, and rivers out overlooked in order to get us out our extra basics. Keep in mind, again, the keyword here is you need to make sure they are snows. And the reason for that is for Blizzard Brawl to trigger its a secondary ability, which means our creature can gain indestructible so long as we have three snow permanents out. As far as your sideboard, real quick, we have duresses for the control matchups. A copy of Heroic Intervention if we need to protect the whole board. Dina Soul Steeper is really sweet with Hooded Blightfang because it can then trigger off its ability, which is whenever we gain life, each opponent loses one life. In case you haven't noticed already, some of our cards actually do help us gain quite a bit of life, so we can stabilize very easily. So Dina, when it triggers off, just helps us also speed up the game plan if we need to bring her in. Infused with Vitality just helps us give a instant version of Call of the Death Dweller on the battlefield. Same thing, gives us some more life gain, which also triggers off Dina. An unlicensed hearse as one of our graveyard hate options, and also it can pump itself up very quickly and then help us close out the game if we just need to swing big with something. Extra Call of the Death Dweller. Two Elspeth Nightmare, same thing. A little extra removal to stack up with Blood Chief's Thirst. Also can help discard a card with the help of Duress as well, stacking that. And then finally, also stacking with unlicensed hearse, a way to exile our opponent's graveyard. And finally, to round out the package, some artifact enchantment hate with broken wings but also in a pinch it can destroy a creature with flying you notice that obviously aside from our fight spells we don't really have a way of dealing with flyers which can then go over us and defeat us if we're not careful but that's otherwise for you the package is nothing super fancy again we're just going to try to put up some blockers early on that have death touch forcing our opponent to stall themselves out and then hopefully we can just build up a board have enough protection to keep our creatures in play and just start swinging to get those counters on our opponents now, if you do like this game plan, all I just ask for you again is before we continue on is be sure to give a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so you can enjoy all the deck techs, booster pack openings, gameplays, and so much more that I put out there. And I really do appreciate all the support that all of you give me by checking out my 
content. Of course, our game plan, as you saw, is great against creatures, but we do struggle, and this is again one of the weaknesses to the deck that I want to also caution you on is, the deck is a little weak to control decks, and the reason for that is, as you see, with the fact that we have a lot of creatures in the deck, most of our game plan revolves around hoping to hopefully getting other stuff out of the way. Blizzard Brawl is great, but it's kind of slow. We have cards, that's why we are utilizing cards like Master's Rebuke to kind of help speed that up, but we don't have that many copies to work with. Also, if our opponent has a lot of Wraths and a lot of removal and counter spells, Call of the Death Dweller can only do so much. And if, say, like they blow up our board and we try to use a Call of the Death Dweller and they counter that, we're really going to be in a bad spot. So just be aware of that when you're playing this deck. It's a solid deck against mostly creature and mid-range piles, but against control, this is why you want to go to your sideboard for that stuff. Having said that, it's still going to be a bit of a tricky game plan against them. You want to try to rely on your duresses. You want to try to rely on life gain and drain with Hooded Blightfang and Dina Soulsteeper if you're dealing with control decks out there. Same thing also, we do have a a bit of a weakness in the initial game plan if you're trying to deal with graveyard happy decks. So don't forget to bring in again those Elspeths, bring in your unlicensers. We don't really have that much in terms of just pure graveyard hate because our game plan is just hoping that we can get those counters of poison on our opponent fast enough before they can make their game plan go off. But otherwise, if you do like this deck, I leave a link below and be sure to give it a try and I'm sure you will not be disappointed. All right, everybody. So if you're still there, as always, here's my secret shout out if you are hanging into the video. And at this point, thank you once again to my true fiery friends. For just a second, I will show you exactly what you want to do to upgrade this deck and make it amazing. So the upgrades we're going to be looking at are actually not super intense. It's not going to really change too much of the game plan of the deck, mostly just because we don't really have too much already that supports the main game plan of Finn. So in order to just maintain that, we just want to get a couple more stronger creatures in the main deck. The sideboard, however, does have a little bit more of a shakeup. But first, let's go over what we upgrade here. So instead of our Vampire, we're going to get rid of that, and we're just going to add in now Knight of the Even Legion. This is a standalone card that already can pump itself up and become extremely powerful if it goes unchecked. That alone would give us another plan to help us just close out the game faster if we just can't get the main game plan to go ahead and work. As far as anything else in the deck, most of it again just stays the same. We are just going to give a slight change to the land base. We'll add in Fable Passage now. Granted, you will lose the life gain that we would have had from the Rivers Overlook, but the main thing that we have, of course, is consistency with our land base. We're going to keep, again, the Woodland Chasms. I know it might be more tempting to have more Shocklands, but if you don't have Blizzard Brawl's secondary ability activate to gain your creature indestructible, that sometimes may cost you something that might be more important to keep. Having said that, one copy of Baseju and a single copy of Castle Lockwain, just to make sure that we can draw through our deck. The Besaju, as always, is just meant to destroy an artifact or enchantment in the main deck in a pinch if we really, really need to. As far as your sideboard is concerned, we're going to then replace our Duresses with Thoughtseize, no surprise there. An extra copy of Heroic Intervention comes in, that means we will go down one Elspeth's Nightmare, but then we'll swap it out. We'll also add in a little bit more Graveyard Hate, since we're now going to be focusing a little bit more on that regarding the format that we're playing in. We're adding in two Return of Nature. This gives us a faster interaction for Artifacts and Enchantments at a cheaper rate. Speaking of more Graveyard Hate, we're going to be adding in two copies now of Unlicensed Hearse. We'll add in, instead of Dina, we'll now add in Vito Thorn of the Dust Gross. I love this card a lot, but it also helps synergize with our game plan. If you just imagine that anytime you get life gain and drain with Dina, this Vito just ratchets that up even faster. It still synergizes with Call of the Death Dweller to bring it back in. But the other main reason is his secondary ability is extremely powerful. By turning all of our creatures into lifelink and death touchers, it pressures our opponent to either take the damage, or worse, they lose their whole board with death touch creatures, and with that life gain, it helps us trigger off Vito, closing out the game extremely quick, sometimes in, in one shot. And the final cards we're going to be adding in, two copies of Vivian Arcbow Ranger. This four drop Planeswalker also gives us another way to stack a secondary option, or I guess I should say now third or fourth i don't know i've lost count but it basically helps us stack up another option to trigger in case if the main game plan again is not working as i mentioned earlier many of our creatures are very weak with attack power of only one maybe two at best 
Vivian's plus one ability allows us to then add some counters and give our creatures trample. Trample at the very least would then help us still force through damage, so Finn the Fangbearer's ability can still trigger off as long as we get that damage through to our opponent. Now they really need that, it's just a nice sweet bonus. And there you have it everybody, that is Touch of Death for you for the Explorer format. So, let me know, what do you think? Are you a fan of highly synergistic types of decks that have multiple ways of getting to victory? Or maybe you are a fan of these Death Touch style of decks, so tribal decks if you will, or maybe you just like alternate win cons with the poison counters. Either way, let me know in the comments below and I would love to hear from you. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play, in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!